Good afternoon. This is George Miller with City Trends. This is our first show, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, I took this opportunity to have a platform to introduce uh, people throughout the Valley that are doing phenomenal things. Uh, myself, I'm a consultant. Uh, I own GNS Consulting, and my first guest is Arlen Poller. He's also a consultant, and he's going to share with you what he's uh, doing here in the Valley. Arlen, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now, me and you have talked several times about consulting, and we both have similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Could you share with the audience what it is that your consultant company does? Well, basically, uh, our focus is on making better use of the human assets of the organization. So it's a very human-centric uh, approach to optimizing business success. We refer to it as factoring in the human factor. Great, great. And we were talking earlier uh, about millennials because the dynamics of business are changing immensely. And, and, and a big component of that is millennials entering the workforce. And what are some of the same changes that you've seen since the millennials have entered the workforce? Well, it seems to me, from what I understand that we're referring to when we, when we uh, say millennials, is uh, we're, we have a, a, a generation of people who are coming into the workplace with a very different uh, philosophy for life and a different um, uh, set of core values. And uh, it's kind of driving the old school uh, a bit nuts because they, they, it's a different work ethic. It's, uh, the work ethic is there, but it, it's not the uh, responding to the command and control type uh, work ethic of the past. It's more what's in it for me. And if you're not used to running a company based on what's in it for the employee, then uh, it gets confusing. And, and I, I find that sometimes. Uh, I just went out and, and spoke to a corporation, and one of the issues that they were having is they were having to make those adjustments. Because, as you said, the things that inspired previous generations do not inspire this generation. That's right. Yeah. And uh, the thing that, that really stood out is in previous generations, and we've talked about this before, when you sit across from somebody and they say, if you work for us for 30 years, you're going to get this, 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 and this. And that used to motivate people, but that's not the case anymore. And we know that when the millennials come on, they're like, I'm not going to be there 30 years. You're lucky if I'm going to be there five years. And what's one of the reasons for that? Well, I, I think that uh, we see in what we refer to as the millennials, which is kind of a broad brush thing, and we, we know what the caveats are about that. But, with, but within that uh, personality type we refer to as the millennials, uh, there's, I think there's a higher degree of self-actualization and uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs can be a, a useful reference in understanding what's going on. These are, are uh, folks that uh, aren't desperate about their basic needs. They, they can work here or they can work someplace else. And uh, as is, seems to be the trend, they can always go back to mom and dad's place if they get stuck in between jobs. Yeah, so so <laughs> they, have, they come with their own safety net and so they're not as anxious about those basic needs you know, food, shelter, et cetera. Uh, but they're looking more for, for higher aspiration needs, uh, meaning and significance and uh, satisfaction in, in what you do. So they're much more oriented around intrinsic motivation rather than extrinsic motivation. And much more w what's going on today, here and now, rather than what am I working for 20, 30 years from now. And you really, you really hit a key point there with the intrinsic versus extrinsic motivators. And that's something that I've been sharing with corporations a lot. And, and one of the reasons why is previous generations were motivated by extrinsic motivators. If, if you do this and this and you, you hit the deadline, you're going to receive this bonus. But with this generation, while that may motivate them, it doesn't motivate them as much as, like you said, with intrinsic motivator. It means a lot more for the CEO to come down from his office and, and to go find that employee that did a great job and say, you know, I took time out of my day because I noticed what you did and, and I wanted to come down and congratulate you. That has a lot more weight. Yeah, and that's consistent with my experience in, in uh, working with uh, organizations, uh, the, the recognition and uh, uh, 
So they, they're coming from a very different place in terms of what's important. And I would say it's, it's more here now, immediate, uh, and the future will take care of itself. Not that they're not focused on their future and don't care about their future. It's just how they go about getting to their future is a different approach than the, shall we say, the more traditional old school. Okay, well, I'm going to change the subject a little bit because we've, we've talked a lot about consulting. What, what's your philosophy? When, 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 when you get called for a consulting assignment, what's your philosophy on consulting? And what's your approach on consulting? Well, I kind of touched on that in the opening uh, response there. It, uh, the, human, the, 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 the human assets is probably the most uh, underutilized asset in an organization. So there's a lot more there available if we create a culture that makes it safe and inviting for people to bring more of the, their complete self uh, in, into their life at work. Uh, they, uh, they, they feel like they can bring their whole, whole being into, into work. So what we want to do is we want to create an environment in which that is uh, supported, certainly that it's safe to be who you are. Ho authenticity is a key component of our philosophy and uh, so that then people will, will bring more of their whole self. Uh, there's a lot of discussion around uh, discretionary effort and uh, that would be another way to talk about the underutilized assets is the discretionary effort. You can come in and you can do what it is you have to do to keep your job or you can come in and do at the high point and bring the very best that you can bring. You know, you, you, I was actually at a company not too long ago and, and I brought up a similar point. And I talked about mandating used to be extremely effective. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us come from military backgrounds, myself included, and we're used to being mandated to and, and direct orders, and you need to implement this within this time frame. But with this generation, what I find is when you inspire them, you get a lot more out of them. When you mandate them, they perform what you need them to perform, but that's about the extent of it. Mm -hmm. When you inspire them, you get the job done and more. Is that what you're finding? Yes, that's consistent with uh, my, uh, my experience, and it goes back to that uh, intrinsic reward. It also uh, touches on the significance of the, uh, the autonomy. I think of it as individual people making individual choices are, is really the cellular building blocks of any organization. So even if it's mandated, there's still a chooser choosing to honor that mandate. But if we connect with them as the chooser and say we want you to be a part of this and to actively, uh, coming from their own autonomy, to, to join up, uh, I think this is the essence of what we're talking about when we talk about employee engagement, is that the chooser chooses to be engaged. And we don't treat them as a mechanism that you just flip a switch because there's always that space between stimulus and response where the person is making the choice and back to the millennials, I, I think they're more aware of uh, their own autonomy. Great point, great point. Um, can you share with the audience how to get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, phone number is 559-432-4776. And I'm also, uh, the website is uh, www.highpointconsulting.net. And that's easy enough to, uh, to get a hold of. So either way, uh, that would be a way to get a hold of me. Well, thanks for coming on, Arlen. I hope to see you again. Yeah, thank you for having me.